Hey everybody, so in this video we're going to look at four more examples of doing present value. So let's look at number four. So Cassidy wants to trade in her car that is worth $6,500 and agrees to pay $500 every month for the next four years on a new car. The interest rate is 4.75% compounded monthly. Alright, so for part A, what is the cash value of the new car today? So essentially, how much is the car worth? Right, so starting off with N, it is monthly, and it's over four years. So 12 times 4. I percent is going to be the 4.75 over the number of compounding, so 12. PV is what we're looking for. The payment is 500 every month. And FV is zero because we want the car paid off by the end. All right, so if we put this in the calculator, we have N is 12 times four. I percent is the 4.75 divided by 12. PV, we don't know. The payment is 500. And we leave the future value as zero. So we click solve for PV, and that's what we want. So if we go back to our notes, we have, it was 21,797 and 12 cents, All right? That's from the online calculator. If you do this in your actual calculator, you would have gotten 21,818.61. All right, now we're not quite at our answer yet because that is not the cash value of the new car. That's just how much she took out a loan for. But she also put in $6,500 worth of a trade-in, which means they took $6,500 off of the cash value because she traded in her car. So in order to get the true cash value, we need to add back in that $6,500. Now that would be the same thing with a down payment. A down payment would also have to be added back in like that. All right, so if we do that, we would get $28,297.12. That is the cash value of the new car. All right, for part B, how much interest would she pay with this deal? So for how much interest, we need to figure out how much did she pay. So she paid 500 per month, so times 12, for four years, so times four. That would give us $24,000. And then we can subtract the amount that she financed, which is the $21,797.12. When we do that, we get $2,202.88. That's how much interest she ended up spending on the car. All right, so example five is going to be linked in with that example four. So Destiny suggests that Cassidy talk to her friend about this new car. Destiny's friend can get Cassidy an interest rate of 4.4% compounded monthly if she pays an additional $1,000 down. She'll get the exact same amount for Cassidy's trade-in if Cassidy agrees to pay $600 a month for the next three years. All right, and then same two questions. What is the cash value? and how much interest is she earned. 
So let's start with the cash value. So big N is 12 times three years in this case. I percent is now 4.4 .4 divided by the 12. PV is what we're looking for. The payment is $600. and FV is zero. All right, so if we take that over to our calculator, we can start putting this in. So 12 times three, the I percent was 4.4 .4 divided by 12. PV we don't know, so we can skip over that. And the payment was 600. Click solve for PV, and that will get us our value. In this case, it is $20,188.35. All right, now that's from doing it online. If you did it in your calculator, you would be getting 20000 249. All right, now again, remember that this is still talking about Cassidy from example four, right? So in this case, she still had that $6,500 trade in. So we have to add $6,500. In this case, she also put an additional $1,000 down. That means that's $1,000 before she actually financed, which means we have to add that back in as well to get to the true amount that's the cash value of the car. So if we add all of those together, we're going to get $27,688.35. That is the cash value of the car. For how much interest, we're going to do the same thing. 600 per month, so 600 times 12. This time it's just three years, so times three would get us 21,600. And then we can subtract the amount that she financed. So $20,188.35. Right, remember, when we subtract, we're just using this amount that she financed, not the total cash value of the car, because she's not paying interest on the trade-in or the $1,000 down. All right, subtract this off, and our answer is going to be $1,411 and 65 cents. All right, so then which is the better deal? Well, if we scroll back up just a little bit so you can see both answers, then we can clearly see not only is the cash value much lower, for example, five, but also she's paying way less interest at that point. So the better deal is example five. All right. Now keep in mind, that doesn't mean that there's never a reason to not go with example four. Times that you would want to go with example four is times when you can't actually afford $600 a month. Maybe you can only afford $500 a month. In which case, example four is the option you would want to go with. But if you just want to look for the better deal, Example five is it. All right. So we're graduating from cars to houses. So Alex wants to buy a house selling for $150,000. He will put 30,000 down as a down payment and finance $120,000. If the bank offers a 30 year mortgage at 4.99% annual interest compounded monthly, what will his monthly payments be? Okay, so.
starting off with the big N. It's going to be 12 times 30. All right, because it's a 30-year mortgage. All right, the I percent is going to be 4.99 divided by 12. Then what is our present value? So the present value is the amount that we're actually taking a loan out for. So that's just the $120,000 that we financed. The $30,000 down, that's already taken care of. So we don't have to look at that, and we don't look at the whole $150,000. It's just the amount that we're taking the loan for. So it's $120,000. The payment is what we don't know, and future value is zero. So if we go over to our calculator, N is going to be 12 times 30. I percent is 4.99 divided by 12. The present value is 120,000. The payment is what we don't know, and FE is zero. So we solve for payment, and we can take that back over to our notes. So from the online, we got $647.12. And if you did this in your calculator, you would have gotten $643.45. All right, so part B, approximate how much interest will he pay if he makes all the loan payments on time. All right, so we take the amount of his payment, which in this case is $647.12, and we multiply that by 12 a year over 30 years. All right, so if you multiply that out, we get $232,963.20. All right, so that's how much he's actually paying. And then we subtract out the original loan amount, which was the $120,000. When we do that, we get $112,963.20. Which means to buy this house with a 30 year mortgage, you are going to end up paying over $112,000 in interest alone, which is close to the value of the house itself. All right, one more. So, Brendan and Amy are buying a house to flip. They found one for $175,000 and put 20% down. The bank is offering a 30-year loan at 3.75% compounded monthly. So part A is what is the loan amount, as in how much are they financing? All right, to figure that out, we take the $175,000, that's the total cost of the house, but they put 20% down already. So first, let's figure out what 20% of that actually is. So times 0.2. That would give us $35,000. Right? So this is the amount that they're putting down, as in they're already paying this much. Right? So that's not going to be what's the loan. We have to take that out first. So $175,000, that's how much the house actually costs, minus the $35,000 that they're putting down up front is going to be $140,000 that they're actually trying to get a loan for. 
All right, so that's the loan amount. You gotta subtract out the down payment first. All right, next, what will the monthly payments be? Now it's just back to another one, just like example six. So monthly payments, we start off with N, it's gonna be 12 times 30. I percent, it's gonna be 3.75 over 12. Present value is the amount that we're taking the loan out for, so $140,000. Payment is what we're looking for, and future value is always zero for these. All right, so if we take that to the calculator, starting off with N. So it's gonna be 12 times 30. I percent is gonna be 3.75 divided by 12. The present value is 140,000. Payment's what we're looking for, and FE should stay zero. Let's click solve for payment, and it's pretty close to the one before. So our payment from the online one is gonna be $645.98. And if you did that in your calculator, you would have gotten $648.36. All right, part C, what is the approximate total amount of interest paid during the term of the loan? All right, so again, we're gonna take the $645.98, multiply it by, you pay that 12 times a year, then you multiply that by 30. Do that, we get $232,552.80. Then we're going to subtract the $140,000, that was the loan amount, and we get $92,552.80. And that's the amount of interest that was paid this time.